Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Uh, Lori says, I have an issue with eloping with my five-year-old autistic son. He knows how to unlock locks, climb on chairs to get them open. No matter what locks we use, he gets out. I need to shower during the night when he is asleep and make sure he's in, uh, in the bathroom oh when I gosh. need to use it. It is the scariest thing. I can barely cook in the kitchen unless he's in there with me. How do I tame this? He will be starting kindergarten this August. Thank you. We're going to start with a hug. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And, 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 and a kudo because you're, you're a brave woman because you're writing and saying, I need help. Right. That's amazing. You're doing a good job. That's right. Absolutely. And so was, it, was she saying that he elopes? Is that what the major issue and, is? Yes. Yeah. And that he can unlock. It doesn't matter. He can get on the chair and he's, you know, I, I, I'm putting words and in her how mouth. How old is he? Five. Five. And he's starting kindergarten in the fall. So I also want to make sure that we talk about what we're going to do to prepare the school. Yes, that is probably even more important because let's face it, realistically, you can buy locks that are at the top of the door that he doesn't matter what he gets up on top of, he's not going to reach. There are fortunately child safety types of doorknobs nowadays. There's even a, uh, I bought this for my daughter, which is so funny because I had purchased it for her for security, yeah. security in San Francisco. But then later I realized it's the wrong type of lock. It's for people not to get out, not, not about people getting in. <laughs> okay. So this would be perfect for you. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a type of, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's a type of gizmo that you put on the actual doorknob and then you put something in it. And let me tell you, there's no way I could open it. Like, yeah. so uh, there are a lot of safety things and there's, you have no choice but to do that first. That is right. the most important thing you can do is to actually just make sure that he's not eloping. The second thing is teaching him how to not elope when those things are not around. And that is not something you can do personally. I think I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that we would do as ABA therapists, but you do need a team of young people to do yeah. that because this is one of the most dangerous things that happens with our kids, as you know. They have very little understanding of safety in the beginning, and so it becomes a really important thing to teach them. And I hate to say it, but the only way that we learn how to avoid fire is by getting burned a little bit. I mean, that's just the way it is. You, When you're a child, I mean, I actually did this when I was a child, which is so funny. I actually put my finger on the fire. I did because, too. Because I was like, what yeah. is that, you know? And then you learn and you never touch it again. Yeah. And so this, the, with eloping, the issue is that our kids often just take off and their experience is not a negative one to begin with, right? They're not uh -huh. aware, they just walk around, they go places, they look around, they're not scared, they don't have that natural fear. And uh, you know, you just have to, at that point, teach them the dangers that could happen for them when they elope. But there's a million other things I wanna talk about. Like, yeah. so there's also the school, as Shannon said, and the school is probably the place where that worries me the most because there's always, you know, there are people who are trying to be responsible for you, but then there's this, diffusion of responsibility and there are times when people will just not be responsible and the aide will be like oh well I thought the teacher was looking after him and yeah. the teacher will be like oh well I thought you know so and so was so we hear about elopement more from schools than from homes so please 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 be very very cautious make a huge fuss yeah. at the school so that they are really aware of your fears. Um, get them whatever equipment you can as well to help them keep the classroom safe. Then the last thing that just pops in my, in my mind is there, you know, there are a lot of now watches and other types of wearables. There's even uh, a designer that has like clothing for children who have disabilities where the, um, the, 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 
monitor is hidden in the clothing so that the child can't even take it off, but it is something that will give you a GPS location on your child so that, and you can actually look it up at any given time, right? I mean, uh, you know, I have GPS locators on half my objects because yeah. I lose everything. But so these things do exist now, and you definitely should look at safety and purchase these things um, before you start worrying about how to teach it. But once you feel safe, then you have the time to actually teach this. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things that I learned is that this is a multi-prong process. Yes. Um, that there, It's not just about doing one thing, because I think a lot of people pick one thing and they go, okay, well, I'm going to put safety locks on right. and then call it done. Right. Um, or, um, you know, they, they'll focus on one app. They're like, well, we just need a fence. If we just had a fence or I just need an IEP and it's all of the things. Yeah. It's absolutely all of the things and you, and you have to take it as serious as a heart attack. And, and it's one of those things that I always say to myself, just work the problem. Yeah. Just work the problem. We're going to do, we're going to take control of everything that we can take control of. And, and so making sure there are so many things we've done shows on this before. There's the QR code mm -hmm. from the, there's a site called if I need help. So affordable. You guys, these are real parents that started a company called if I need help.com. We've had them on the show before they make, Make QR codes for your child that you can have printed on tags on their shirts. Um, it's a, you can get an iron on. They have everything under the sun. It's the least expense, expensive thing out there that you Amazing. can do, but it's great. And if your child is found and somebody scans the QR code, it tells them everything they need to know. Law Perfect. enforcement is keyed into it. Um, it's not the only thing to do, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting getting a sensor that can pinpoint where they are on GPS. Did you know that most of your insurances will cover it? And if they don't, most of your states now will cover it. That's amazing. That it's your right to that. And But I would also call your local police department. I was going to say, that's a right? great one. Very good one. And, and ask, can you bring your child by for a tour? Yes. Bring the child over, have them meet the people at the police department Talk to them about the fact that your child has autism and is at risk for running an eloping. Yep. Most police departments don't really know what the term elopement means, yeah. but so tell them my child has autism, he's on the spectrum, he runs, I'm in fear, these are the precautions we're taking, ask them if they have more help. But what you'll do is you'll start to build a relationship because Very heaven, heaven forbid, that you ever can't find your child, it's Very minutes yes. that you have to locate your child to keep your child safe, and you want law enforcement to react like that. Absolutely. And you want law enforcement to know your child so yeah. they know how to handle your child. And likewise for your child to know them Absolutely. so that they don't run away Absolutely. from them. Absolutely. That's a very good point, too. I had a, um, I, what, there was long, you know, 100 yeah. years ago, I was, <laughs> I was supervising, um, residences for the help group. That was my yeah. part of my internship. And um, there was a young man there who used to elope all the yeah. time. And I remember he, ha fortunately, the police department in that area knew him so well yep. that they were a huge help. Let me just say, like every time we, they would get on the road immediately, they would scan the whole area. In fact, they knew better than any of us how, where, what his favorite spots were. Yeah. So working with the police is really, really important. I agree. But then a lot of people stop there. And I think that that's so sad to me because when you have the help of a really well-trained ABA team yeah. is when you get, so when you've gotten taken care of all of the rest of that, then the real teaching begins. That's right. Because, you know, when, when I think about all the people that we've, all the parents that we've had on this show over the last 11 years, who at one point their kid, kiddo has eloped, and we didn't know what we all know now. And what we all know now is that our kids are either running to something or away from something. Mm, I was going to say, exactly. I didn't know that until you told me that. <laughs> Yeah. Can I tell you? Yeah. Like, it makes me emotional to say that to your face. I didn't know that until you told me that. And and I didn't, my kid was already past it. Our team had already helped us to do that, and I still didn't know it. Yeah. But when you look at every single case that's in the news right now of a kid that eloped, they were running to something or away from something. Always. And if we have that knowledge, and we can start to figure out, well, if what they are running to is because they know that three doors down they had puppies, 
and they want to go and see the puppies and they don't have the ability to ask to go see the puppies. But right. the minute you turn your back and you are human, yep. you cannot be on it 24 seven. You right. can't even go to the bathroom. That's right. At some point they're going to go. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, so if we can start to teach them, how do you ask to see the puppies? That's right. It's how, all about that. How do you ask for, and when you ask properly to ask for puppies, I'm going to take you to puppies. But when you don't ask properly for puppies, you don't get to see the puppies. That's right. <clears throat> or even just to begin with something like you can go outside, but only if you're with an adult. Yeah. That is differentiation I think is like one of the most important things is un making the child realize that they do have access but put, you know it's kind of like when when uh, we want to teach kids to uh, play with other kids yeah. one of the things we do is we're like you can go to the playground equipment but you need another child with you you know and it's just yeah. a, it's a requirement of this thing it's like you can step outside but where's the who's the adult that's going yeah. with you and that can be taught. Yes. But Shannon, there's a, and I don't, you know, there's another part of this uh, text or message that makes me wonder if there's a little bit more here, which yeah. is not just the safety of the child that we've been talking about, yeah. which is extremely important. Yeah. But it sounds like also this parent is just, exhausted and overwhelmed oh, because yeah. they're, you know, having to shower when, overnight. So there's, I, I don't, I don't want to, I want to touch that as well. Please. And I just want to say, you know, please, sometimes our kids, in, in daily life, we get so overwhelmed, not just our kids, but like everything, right? I mean, I, I, my kids are grown and gone and they're all lovely people. So I don't have all that on top of me, but I, I even sometimes get overwhelmed, right? And I, uh, what I end up doing, which is just a lesson that I've learned over time, is I start organizing myself and planning things that I have to do. If you look on my phone, there's about 50 to-do lists. You know, that I've, and most of them are checked <laughs> off, which is also, by the way, very satisfying when you go back and you're like, hmm, I did all this, which yeah. is kind of amazing. But, like, make yourself a to-do list of things that you can do to give yourself some respite. Yes. That's kind of important. If you have a friend or a neighbor who could just come by for 30 minutes during the day to give you a break, that would be a good start for you, too. It's not just about helping your child. It is Those things are very, very important. But... It, when you're going through a phase where it's so bad that you can't even take a shower during the day, I mean, most of us go through that when we have newborns, yep. right? Parents of kids with autism go through that for many, many, many years, and it's it's beyond exhausting. It burns you out. Yeah. So you do need some support and help, and please also do a little bit of that, right? That's very, very important. And if... I always say one of the functions that a good ABA team uh, fulfills is partially that because yeah. your ABA team will actually take the child and start teaching them to come here, teaching them to respond, be more compliant, not elope in the house, for instance, yeah. you know, because you can also elope from a situation. Yeah. Um, and while they're doing that, you can go rest, you can go shower and, and take care of yourself. And I think that's just as important. Absolutely. Can I, can I go back to the school thing for just oh, a second? Please, because if, if kindergarten is starting in August, um, it, yeah. then now is the moment that if you didn't already have an, uh, and you may have already done this, but if you didn't already have an emergency IEP meeting yeah. where you guys work on what is the strategy to put antecedent modifications in to, we talked a lot about antecedent modifications yesterday, but to make sure that you're, uh, that they're controlling the situation. You gotta have things in writing, and I'm gonna say this in a way, I don't mean to scare you, but there, the schools, I, I, and I'm a former teacher. I used to work in public schools. So I love schools. I love teachers. I don't love administrators. Yes. I'm just going to say that. Um, and there are some good ones out there, but they're few and far between. If you don't make it a thing for them where they're going to be held accountable if something goes wrong, then your chances that they're going to take as good a care of your child as you are are slim and none. 
So you just got to put the screws to them Absolutely. and say, I want to tour the facility. I want to see your plan. I want to see your self-closing locks on all the gates. I want to walk the perimeter. And they're going to tell you that you're being fussy. And then you're going to say to yourself, yes, yeah. I have arrived. And, I, and I'm, I'm saying to this to you because I did this myself. Uh, they wanted to move him from the the preschool that he was at to a different kindergarten. And I said, I've walked around that school. The gates are open all the time. Uh, he's not going there. Yeah. And they said, oh, no, 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 no. And they put on all the self-closing locks. And I said, self-closing locks are only as good as the people who are trained to use them. And they said, well, we will meet you and we will walk around the whole school. And, and the head of special education is going to walk the school with you. And I said, OK, I'll meet you there. We walked. There were three gates that were self-closing gates that were propped open. And I, and, and I said, this isn't going to work. I'm not sending him here. And she said, I'm, she said, I am giving you my word that I am going to have this fixed within an hour. And I said to her, can I be honest? I yeah. said, you clearly don't have it together. Because if I was you and I knew me and you already all know me, I would have come here and walked this myself and made sure that those gates were all closed before, yeah. before I, I ever met me. And she said, I'm going to be honest with you. I did. So and that I was just like in the last five minutes. Right. And I oh said, well, gosh. now you see why I'm paranoid. And she said, no, totally got it. Totally got it. I'm going to make sure that this never happens so again. Crazy. Right. And, and I, and the other thing that I did was I became a very active volunteer at the school. So I was there a lot, mm -hmm. a lot to make sure that I had eyes on, but we were still doing all the stuff where we were teaching him. We made yeah. sure that he had a one-on-one -on -one aid. Yeah. We made sure that she had backups so that if she needed to take a break. Alarms, you can, alarms the, are the best. Yeah, like alarms, alarms at home, all the doors. alarms at school. Um, we had meetings with the kindergarten teacher who was fabulous, Marv, and we said, here's one of our concerns. And so we had many eyes on the situation. And, and let's go back for a minute, Shannon, real quick uh, to what you said earlier, which is, what is he going for or going yeah. away from? So it's always about balancing the reinforcers, right? So the bigger thing that you can do, which is super important as well, is just look inside the classroom, see what's going on there. Like, if he had a fully reinforcing environment, right, yeah. where he was able to achieve things, like be kept busy with fun activities, receive reinforcers, he, I guarantee you, would not be eloping. Yeah. So let's make sure that his activities are also in place, his schedule is packed, he has good teachers, good aides watching over him, keeping him engaged and teaching him yeah. and reinforcing him or her and making sure that there's, you know, positive environment inside the classroom. Absolutely. Amen to that. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here. Don't forget, you can watch Ask Dr. Doreen live every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time on autismnetwork.com. We hope to see you there.